Hi, this is Bruce again from the McRosty Art Center. We're doing another class. This class is hand building. Um, and I'm here to show you some things to do. Hopefully you've been doing some of the projects we gave you. You have a lot of clay, so feel free to work on things at home and make more than you see me do. You're welcome to make as many things as you possibly can. Today I'm going to work on making some sculptures. And I'm going to start out with an elephant first. And yes, if you had my class before, you know I've done that before. But this one is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit of a jumbo elephant, comparatively speaking. So you want to take a piece of clay and you want to start making a hole in the bottom with your thumb. And you use a little bit bigger piece of clay and you're going to end up with a little bigger elephant this time. So I'm working the clay into a bigger and bigger hole, almost like we were making a push pot, which you've done before. I'm trying to keep the shape on the top, sort of like an elephant's body, but I'm making it hollow so it'll dry out good and it will fire very well like that and we won't lose anything by having it blow up in the kiln. If you fold things or you leave things with an air pocket in them, they're going to explode. So, I'm kind of working it here. An elephant's body is big. We're going to give them short legs because it's going to be a bigger body with shorter legs. And elephants don't really have that long of legs anyway. You take little chunks of clay and you roll them into little balls and that'll be the legs and the feet. One of these days we'll be back doing this together and it'll be a lot more fun than watching me do it here. I hope you've got some nice stuff there and we'll fire them up in a week or so and then you will start glazing. So this is the body. Make it a little bit, make it a little bit more elongated like an actual elephant's body. You can sort of see how it's looking here. Now I have slip. It's wet clay and that's what we use to put the feet on if you want to have success with them sticking. Before I start assembling it though, I'm going to make the head so we can do the assembly all at once. You take a chunk of clay and when you're making any animals, and you certainly can make any animals you can think of, but the way to make an animal look like what it's supposed to look like is the ears. If you make a cat with a little peak pointy ears, it looks like a cat. If you make a dog with kind of floppy ears, it looks like a dog. Same thing if you're making a sheep or a kangaroo or mice or any little animal. The ears are what make it. So for the elephant, it needs to have a trunk. You just use your fingers and pinch and pull the clay and it'll come out nicely. You don't want to make it too thin. That's the thing. As it dries, it becomes very brittle and if you've had any problems with your clay, that's probably why because it, you know, it made it a little too thin. Now to make the ears, I'm using my two thumbs and I'm squeezing them in and I'm starting to pull the clay out. As I work the clay up, the ears become more produce, pronounced. It looks like an elephant's head. And now's the time to really use your imagination. You can give them a nice face with eyes. You can try to make little tusks on here if you want. Just by pinching the clay and pulling it a little bit. Smooth it off. You can use the needle tool to make any little slashes in it. Set up his trunk any way you want to set it up for it sticking up. The ears, quite large, and the indentation. I'm going to make some eyes in him. I'm, for this one, I'm going to use the back of the needle tool and make little round eyes. Well, now you make the trunk any way you want, but once we put the head on the body, you can do some more fitting with it. I'm going to kind of measure it and see how it fits. It's going to go like this. I'm going to use this a stick, and you have plenty of things like that. I'm going to make it a little flat on the body here, where the head's going to go. And then I'm going to oops, 
Then I'm going to score the body lightly with the tool and I'm going to score the back of the head lightly with the tool and then I take slip and I apply it liberally to the scored marks on the head and on the body. Work it in a little bit. As you work it in it'll become a little tacky and that's you know it's going to work then. And then when I put the head on I'm going to wiggle it and the, the, the clays are going to kind of bind together. Put your fingers on the inside and really give it a good twist. Stick it on there nice and tight. And if you make any dig marks in the head or anything, you can certainly fix them. I mean, it's clay. You can keep moving it around as long as it's soft and really get it to do what you want. Put a little end holes in the nose so he can breathe. I think I'm going to put a little lines on his ears to make him look like he's an old elf in a little bit. Give his skin a little texture because I'm sure elfin skin is quite rough. Now for the legs, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to score the bottom. And I'm going to score the legs. You know, they don't necessarily have to be balls. If they're round little barrel shaped, that's probably even better. Score the tops. Now you apply the slip. And I'm actually going to make toes on the feet so they actually do look like the elephant's feet. You just hold on to it and push down a little bit and the feet will get out because the feet are bigger than the legs on an elephant. They're a little bit of a round, flat, pie-shaped deal. And these same sort of techniques can be used with any animal you feel like making. If you feel make, like making a dinosaur or a cat or a mythical animal that you make up in your head, that's perfectly fine. And I'm sure it'll look really great once we get some glaze on it and everything else. So, the bottom is scored. Put the slip on. and apply the feet, legs. The screwing method, the screwing motion, helps the clay bind to each other. You'll feel it actually kind of tighten in, and once it starts doing that, then you just push straight in and you quit twisting. So, and you kind of give him a little push down, He's got to dry, and it's going to take something like this, so oh, a day or two to dry, because he's got some size to him. Now I think all that's left is the tail. Same thing, you take a little piece of clay and Decide where it's going to go. You make it look however you want to make it look. Give them a little scratch on the back end. Wet it down with a little slip. And just kind of work the tail in. You can make a rhinoceros the same way. You can make a giraffe. But if you're making a giraffe, we've had some people do that. And please make the neck pretty sturdy. You don't want to make the neck too fine. So this is a elephant, uh, you know, not too bad, but we'll try something else in a minute or two here. So for the next project today, I think we're going to try and make a head. Just think of it as a person's head and you're going to try and do a face, you're going to try and do hair, ears, nose, lips. 
Um, you start with a round ball because our heads are pretty much round. At the same time, you take your thumb, or you can use you can use your stick and kind of work it in there to make it hollow. If it's hollow, then it'll work a lot better in the kiln and it won't explode. And you, while you're doing this, you may want to make something that looks like a pumpkin as well with Halloween coming. We have some orange glazes. You could do a pumpkin and we could glaze it orange. You just do a pumpkin with a cool face on it. So this is a sculpted face. And I'm going to use a piece of clay here to make a base for it. Needle tool cuts the clay really well. And the base also needs to have some holes in it so it'll dry up before it doesn't explode in the kiln. These little holes will just make it dry a whole lot quicker. And if you've ever been to a museum that had old sculptures of heads and Greek or Roman things like that, they have them sitting on something. So that's the head. Now I'm going to make a little hole in the back of the head. So you make a little hole in the back of the head so it'll dry well and you use a little slip on the bottom again and stick it on this little block here that's going to support it. So this is the face. So this is what we're going to start with here. Now, the sky's the limit for the face. Um, you can use your imaginations. You could change it into a pumpkin. Um, I'm going to add some ears onto it and a nose and try to give it a face and we'll see what happens. I'm using the, my two thumbs and pushing in a little where the eyes are. I'm going to pull out a little for the nose area. I'm going to make a nose out of clay. I'm going to score where the nose will go. Um, a nose sort of looks like a triangular, triangular piece of clay. Um, little slip again. Once this clay is added, then you can shape it any way you want. If you want to give them a pointy, oh my, <laughs> a pointy big nose or just kind of work it into us like a normal kind of nose. As I put the nose on, I smooth the clay out with my fingers so it actually looks like it's part of the person. The eyes have sort of a little indentation. I'm going to make some little eyebrows with a little bit of clay here. Again, a little, little score. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little mark where the clay can go in and sit a little bit. Kind of give them a little bit of a features. The mouth can either be drawn on or carved in. The ears can be added on. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. And like I said, you can make a pumpkin out of it. You can make an animal head out of it. We're going to try and make ears for a... Let's see. The shape of the ear. Kind of half a circle probably. And if you make one you like, you can trace the other one right around it. Just like you were tracing with paper. And you have two ears that are pretty much the same shape. Pretty much. Ears go on the side of the head with a little scoring.
Oh my, that's too much here. We need to make it a little thinner. This one's more the right size. It's a little thinner because our ears aren't really measured in really thick area. That's a little bit better for an ear. We'll try and cut this one down to make something appropriate. Oh yeah. And if you don't like the ears, it doesn't he doesn't have to have ears or you could turn it into headphones and let them be listening to music. actually stuck the ears out a little bit so they actually do maybe look a little bit like ears anyhow. And for the eyes, make take a little pieces of clay, make a little round ball of clay. Probably, depending on the size of your head, probably the size of a little pea. Same time you'll do a little scoring again doesn't have to be too deep, just have to break the surface of the clay a little bit. Put it in, give it a little push, a little push. And then what I would do is make a little kind of, take your needle tool and make a little circle in the center so you actually know that it's the eyes. Now for the mouth. Mm, I think since we're adding on pieces, we might as well add on a mouth. You can look in the mirror and get a picture for lips, or you can just kind of guess. Some little shape sort of like this. I guess that's what the movie stars have for lips. And the lips go below the mouth. But these lips are a little bigger, so I have to cut them down a little bit. But it's easy to do. Once the mouth is on, then I'm going to add a little bit of a teeth, tooth line. And I think we have kind of a face there. Now you could put a hat on them. You could make a little bit of hair. I might try to do a little hair on this one. Hmm. Hair. I'm going to use the stick and roll this out a little bit. You could put an old English wig on them like they had in England in the old days. Let's see. I think we can kind of call that good for today, and if you make projects like this, you can work on them, let them dry for a little while, and if you want to carve them down a little bit or change them a little bit, you can always go back and do that, as long as the clay is soft. Hopefully you're keeping your clay at home sealed well in that bag so it stays soft, and if it starts to get a little hard, put a little water in the bag, seal it up, and it'll rejuvenate a little bit. Thanks, that's it for this episode, and we'll see you again soon.